the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom B. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Oh, okay. Charlie, girl. Come here. Charlie. Oh, man. She's so cute. I know. Where's she supposed to be? Mm, I was tired. Come here, Charlie. Just come here. There aren't oh. any ships of note out there right now. Good. But the. Cool. Yeah, the uh, preventer is dragging in the water. Okay, I'm gonna rig it. I heard it bang. I'm like, I'm gonna rig that thing. Yeah. Uh, my watch is done. It's time for Maddie to come out. It's four in the morning, and we've had a gorgeous day of sailing. Like all day, we've been doing like five to six knots. It's been nice and steady wind. Mints. It's your turn. There's a ship coming out over the uh, horizon on our starboard bow, and that's it. The reason regen is so important is because solar is only good by day. At night, there's no sun for anything, and if you get really cloudy days, no solar. So being able to have solar and regen with a hydro generator, we're able to meet two forms of giving us power. So what that means is that if it's sunny, we can make power with the sun with the solar panels. If it's not sunny, there's probably a lot of wind, and then we can make power with regen through the hydro generator of the electric motor. So this lets us keep all our systems running and operational, no matter the conditions. And that means that we are unstoppable, unless there's no wind, then we go nowhere. One of my least favorite parts about long passages is the watch schedule. No matter what you do, and we do four hours on, four hours off, but no matter what, you just never get, it's never enough. You never get enough sleep, and you're just kind of groggy for the whole pass. It's time. I have served my four hours. Charlie's awake. Yes, Charlie got up. Hi, Charlie. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. So a little recap, day one, we left. Seas are horrible, both of us were seasick. We didn't film much. Day two. I wasn't seasick when we left. Oh. Remember? Then why didn't you film? So, day two, much nicer conditions. Then I'm doing a little rig check. And I noticed that the control line to a monitor that I literally replaced the day before we left is severely chafed. So now I have to replace it again, but underway. This is day three. No? Yep. No? Yep. No, this is day two. Nope. Uh, we left Monday. Uh-huh. This is day three. What happened on day two? Yesterday. Yeah, what happened? Not I made, much? I made shrimp. Wow. <laughs> All right. We mostly just slept, uh -huh. like, on and off. So the better recap is the fact that I have no idea when or where we are. <laughs> I know we're north of the Dominican Republic. Yeah, so now we're gonna, so all right, so this thing's lasted three days, still not a great track record. So monitor sells a specific rope for this. I can't get it because we weren't in the States. So I, first time I used Dyneema as a replacement, that one worked okay, but it broke along the way. I replaced it with uh, the stay set because I figured that'll work pretty well. 
it's lasted three days. If I go in, Just don't fall in. yeah, that's the plan. Please. Don't fall in. That's number one plan. That little bit of chafe up where it makes this 90 degree turn, I thought that was the bad spot. And I was really worried about, will this chafe last until we get to Florida? And then I was just checking the rest and then down at the bottom, it was completely chafed through. So that needed replacing pronto while underway. So Maddie hand steered, I crawled out there. We got it fixed. We are continuing with Wendy steering us. And the important reason that we did it now instead of waiting and seeing if it makes it to Florida is it'll probably break during a storm and at night because that's just how things go. Whew. Made some avocado chicken. Healthy day. Oh. <laughs> Here's Charlie. Charlie, literally everything in here is toxic to you. Sorry. Ready to eat miracle noodle, Japanese curry. It's nice when you're provisioning to plan for passages like this uh, and get a bunch of food that will be easy to make really quickly in rough seas. So not that the seas are really rough right now, but I'm lazy right now. And Herbie ate all the bread, so this is our lunch. day four of our passage from Puerto Rico to Florida and this is kind of where we start to get into more of a rhythm. The first three days of a long passage are really rough because neither of us is sleeping well. Uh, the watches are just our bodies don't know how to handle it but now we're kind of getting into a routine, getting into a rhythm. Even Charlie I think is getting better and it becomes a lot more enjoyable. 
The waves are very big, but they are following seas, so they're not really affecting us horribly, and we're just making really good time. All in all, this has been a pretty good passage, and uh, I'm grateful for that because we have a history of <laughs> not having great passages. We have barely touched Wendy, our monitor wind vane, and we haven't changed the sails since day one. It wouldn't be a day out at sea without something going a little bit wrong. Today it was Wendy, our wind steering. Even though Herbie replaced part of the line yesterday, another part chafed through today and it just completely broke. So we all of a sudden were hope too. Now he's fixing it and I'm hand steering. Making more bread. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. My watch is starting, and like I said before, we're kind of getting more into the routine of things. Um, we do four hours on, four hours off, sometimes giving each other an extra hour of sleep somewhere in there, and it's not bad. I just listen to podcasts, make sure I'm always looking around, and so far uh, the nights have been pretty uneventful, which is good. I think tonight's going to be extra easy because it's a very comfortable ride right now. This is a perfect day slash evening for sailing. And it just makes it so enjoyable that I'm not seasick. So we've been going back and forth. So last night Herbie took first watch, now it's my turn to take first watch. It's about 7.30 p.m. or 8. So with a nice early start, we can slip into the rhythm. One ship, it was huge. It wow. passed us with three miles. Nice. I wonder if it was coming out of Cuba. So on my watch, the wind just kind of fizzled out. It got real light and we're doing between two to three knots, which when you have 500 and some miles to go, two to three knots is not the speed you want to go. So I raised our jib with a reef in it and then Took the main out of the equation because it was stealing the wind from the jib and then just not going fast enough like we could do a little better so i raised the main slowly until you know it was doing work but still not stealing the wind from the jib and that happened to be about the third reef point so i just put it in with three reefs so we're going downwind in light airs with a yankee jib and three reefs in our main and if you're wondering why on earth do we have such small sails up for downwind and light airs, it's for sail balance. That's it. This way, the wind steering just takes us along on a nice straight course, right by Cuba. And some really exciting news, we just crossed the 500 mile mark. 
it just means that we'll have to go on another adventure and come back when all of this disaster is under control. It was my first time doing it all on my own without any of Herbie's instructions or help. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.